Hello YouTube! Uh, I'm Ben Lucas, I'm a photographer, I made a thing! So now I'm going to snap my fingers, you're going to see a gorgeous montage of some of the behind the scenes, and then I'm going to give you a little walkthrough. Let's take a minute to see what I've made so far. So here's the frame that we have going on so far. Uh, yes, I know these studs are the wrong way. I did that on purpose. This is not going to be a, that structural or load bearing and I need literally every inch of space I can get. <clears throat> so from this side, this is kind of how the frame looks. And I am gonna put in one shelf right about here. So we're gonna put in some of those right there. So I need to cut some new ones. Um, and then just so I can maybe get one more structural support here, I will probably put in uh, two more beams. So that is going to be the next section and I'll pick this up tomorrow. Let's talk about this wall. Um, it has been a few months. I'd like to say a few months, but honestly, I think it was last summer. So it's been more than a few months since that footage you just saw uh, was created. Anyway, so why am I building this wall in the first place? Uh, it serves several reasons. Reason number one is it is obviously a very nice display wall. Uh, if not only for the stuff I shoot, but every single thing on the wall is a different material or style or thing so that when uh, my clients look at the wall and say, ooh, what is that? I like that. I can say, oh, that's an acrylic sample wall, thing number one. Thing number two is I primarily needed this to store the crash pad, which I'll show in a minute the side storage on the side so I needed this to be at least eight feet long because the crash pad and the v-flats are eight feet long thing number three is this is a nice room divider because obviously this is you know trying to build it out as a studio renovation still in progress but it is you know a converted garage and in one big room I need multiple areas so right now uh, camera is in the client lounge area and I want to keep this nice and clean and calming and relaxing back there is a hecking chaotic mess and I want a visual divider for that so that is how I built this wall what I'm doing with it but I want to show you this side of the wall before we move on to the back so I put all of these on French cleats. Now, if you're not familiar with French cleats, Google it. No, um, I'm kidding, but I'll show you. So I built all of these little things. So a French cleat is just a 45 like that that goes on a 45 on the wall. And between the flat tension here, between the wall and it pressing on the cleat and the cleat itself, these hold an immense amount of weight. Um, I learned about it from people hanging their tools and stuff on French cleats and I thought, hey, that'd be pretty cool uh, because it allows me to rotate these out very quickly without drilling into the wall, leaving a bunch of holes that have to get patched. Um, and I can just, you know, pick them up, move them around as needed, as the whims change, as a product no longer gets offered, as I shoot something new that I want to update an old photo with. So French cleats, at least for me, were a great way to display it. Another huge perk of the French cleats is I can hang things on here that are not normally hung on a wall. So for instance, I made this little French cleat holder here and it has my wedding magazine. I give this to all my wedding clients. It is everything I know about planning your wedding so that uh, you have the most successful day of. And then that just hangs 
right on the wall, right next to the boudoir holder. So let's show you this side. So this is the side that got framed, and then this side got framed to the IKEA cabinet there. So I didn't do anything fancy. I know I could have put hinges or something, but I just put an easy hole, and now this can be put to the side, and I can store all of my stuff. So on this top part, I actually put some back support beams um, in here. I'll, can you zoom in and see that? There's a beam back there so that none of my stuff accidentally goes past um, the hole where it goes. So this is an eight foot uh, wall. So the front four feet got beamed in with that and then the rest of it goes all the way back. So the reason why the rest of it goes all the way back <laughs> and one of the reasons why this is so big is I have a huge freaking crash pad, which gets used occasionally on photo shoots and I needed an excellent way to store it. So that was kind of hiding this monstrosity was the inspiration for this whole thing, but I knew it was gonna serve multi uses of storing all my stuff, dividing the client area from my messy storage area, which you're about to see in a minute, and holding all my other stuff. So here's an old acrylic background that I shoot on. Here are some other uh, Actually, those are art samples. I know in here we've got some photography backdrops and I've got some V flats um, that are collapsible. Um, I didn't know that I was going to be getting the collapsible ones when I built this. I thought I was going to have to store eight feet worth, but I do really like these and I'll do another video on that in the future. Okay, let's go around to the other side. All right, so on this side, the IKEA unit actually fills out this whole half. It's a thing I already owned. I wanted to hide it, obviously. But I built out this extra area two reasons. Reason number one, I needed that side to be eight feet, as previously mentioned for the crash pad. Reason number two is I needed things tall vertical storage. So there are some things I have the horizontal storage on that side, but I wanted vertical storage. So for instance, all of my soft boxes, vertical storage, um, this background thing could be horizontal, but you know, it's pretty tall, pretty bulky. Basically most of the fragile stuff ended up on this side. Um, I'll probably put some hooks or something in here for my umbrellas. Um, I've got the grids, just all the kind of tiny things. Uh, I don't know how good my thermometer is, so I even put one in there too, but you can see how I did some of the framing here as well. Um, you know, I could finish this side, but I'm not gonna. But also you get to see kind of how I framed this out. So you saw from the intro how this all got framed out. We've got support beams. Uh, this is actually a half shelf here, which acts as another support beam. And then this is actually the interior wall so that anything that I put on that side is nice and smooth. So the interior wall goes all the way back. It'll stop anything from falling all the way through. See, it can't go any farther back than the expedit unit because it is all closed off. And yeah, it makes it really easy for the stuff on that side to stay nice and safe. I have the tall storage for all of the tall things that I need. Um, and then of course I can still, you know, shh, it's a mess. Uh, I'm working on it. Everything is work in progress. So that is my art display storage hide -a wall that I built for the studio. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, you know, all that good normal stuff that you do on internet videos. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, I know this was a very long time coming, but that's how it works. You are watching me renovate a studio in real time. And in between the renovations, there's, you know, life and clients and all that. So I do hope that you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this specifically, I'll do my best to answer them. If you have enough questions, I'll make a follow-up kind of FAQ video. But I do hope that you enjoyed this and maybe it gave you some inspiration for something that you can do in your own space and technically this is also not mounted to the wall so if you're you know renting a space and you can't drill in now you have a false wall that you can put as many holes into as you want to for your own art so i hope you like this video thank you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one